the metaverse is a term we've heard a lot over the last year, but still seems to be a ton of uncertainty about what it actually is. So in this video, I'm gonna answer some of the most common questions. So I'll put timestamps for all of these chapters in the description, so feel free to skip ahead to the parts that interest you. Back in October 2021, Mark Zuckerberg seemed to just speak the metaverse into existence. Today, we're gonna talk about the metaverse. But it already existed in small ways and the term had been coined back in the 90s. But I think what confused a lot of people was that this wasn't a product or an app that Meta were launching. It was more just a vision for what the future might look like. So while that was very intriguing, it just left people with a lot of questions. Before we get into those questions though, it's worth noting some interesting things about the metaverse. Despite the ambiguity, the metaverse is a big deal. Management consulting firm McKinsey & Co. predict that by 2030, the metaverse will be worth $5 trillion. Already in 2022, over $120 billion have been invested. McKinsey also found that 59% of consumers prefer at least one metaverse experience over the physical, real-world alternative. Also, 95% of business leaders believe that the metaverse will have a positive impact on their business in the next five to 10 years. And as I'm making this video, the EU have just made the metaverse a priority for the digital age of Europe. So we know it's important, but what is the metaverse? There are many different definitions floating around at the moment, and people are still trying to pin down exactly what it is. But quite simply, it's an evolution of the internet that aims to take us away from 2D web pages and apps and into more 3D worlds that are inhabited by other users. So think about these examples. Instead of video calls as we know them now, you and your friends or colleagues would appear as avatars in a 3D space that you can interact with. So you could have your work meetings either in a fancy boardroom or on Mars. Instead of watching a live streaming concert on YouTube, you would be in a virtual venue with other users watching the band appear in 3D and perform the music live in front of you. Is it The Matrix? It sounds a bit like The Matrix. Well, not quite, or at least not yet. Elon Musk's Neuralink definitely does have some Matrixy potential, but just like The Matrix, for now it is mostly science fiction. Is it Ready Player One? Kind of, actually, it's not far off. So the virtual world, the oasis that we see in Ready Player One is essentially a metaverse platform accessed by the players through virtual reality gear. And that technology is not far off what we currently have available. And the story is set in 2045, so it's not the too distant future. So what can I do in the metaverse? Really anything that you'd use the internet for. So connecting with people, gaming, shopping, selling, trading, education, attending virtual social events. The difference being that the experience of each of these activities is enhanced by the fact that you're in an immersive environment with others. So an example that I like to think of is if you were to normally do yoga in your living room and you're watching an instructor on YouTube on your TV, in the metaverse, you, your instructor and other students might be in a virtual park and doing yoga in the same 3D space. The metaverse also provides a lot of opportunities for artists and developers to build and populate it, but more on that later in the video. What does the metaverse look like? Right now, it looks like this, and this, and this, and also this. Mark Zuckerberg's screenshot of Horizon World was a big flop, but he is promising better graphics that should look like this. So the metaverse looks like lots of different things because it is lots of different things. It isn't one single place or app. The same way that Spotify looks different to Reddit or Gmail looks different to Netflix, pockets of the metaverse will differ in style and function from one to the next. Okay, how do I access it? Right now, you can go to Decentraland.org, link in the description, and in just a few minutes, you will be exploring the metaverse. But Decentraland is just a section of the metaverse. At the moment, the metaverse exists in very separate parts that don't really interconnect, and this 
Interoperability is what Mark Zuckerberg believes will be crucial to the success of the metaverse. Like how you can access the internet with different devices, PC, phone, TV, the different ways in which you access the metaverse are going to provide different experiences. There's virtual reality, so a VR headset like the MetaQuest 2 can provide a very immersive metaverse experience. Augmented reality, so special AR glasses or even a mobile device can bring elements of the metaverse and put it into the real world. And then there's flat screen devices. You can experience the metaverse this way, but it is a lo-fi version of how the metaverse should ideally be experienced. Who owns it? Just like the internet, no one. The metaverse is a decentralized platform, but just like the internet, we can expect that big businesses will have a huge influence here too. You will be able to buy digital real estate, similar to how you can own your own small part of the internet with a website domain and hosting. You might have heard the term NFTs. This could be a whole video of its own, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but to boil it right down, NFTs are digital assets with a verifiable original. So think of it like the Mona Lisa. There's only one Mona Lisa. You can buy prints, reproductions of the Mona Lisa, but good luck trying to sell those off as the original. There is only one original Mona Lisa. In the metaverse, you can own digital originals. Is it a good thing? The metaverse is a platform, so it has the potential for a lot of good, but could come with a dark side. In the 2022 State of the Union address, the European Commission president included an initiative on virtual worlds such as the metaverse to ensure the metaverse has European values such as safety and openness. I've also heard people talk about how bullying could be a lot more severe in the metaverse with interactions being much more personal than they are in text-based communications with social media right now. So there are a lot of problems that we're gonna have to face with the metaverse, but we have been here before with the internet. It's not entirely new territory. And while the internet has serious problems of its own, I'm sure most would agree that it is a net positive and overall we are better with it. So thinking about the positives, what opportunities are there? First and foremost, there is building the metaverse. The virtual worlds that make up the metaverse will need to be built and maintained and that involves lots and lots of hard work by artists and developers. So if creating immersive experiences is of interest to you, you might like to subscribe to my newsletter over at john-bradley.com. It's completely free and you will receive weekly insights into the design and creation of immersive experiences and themed entertainment. Buying and selling real estate. So just like in real life, you can make a profit by strategically purchasing land, that's virtual land, in an area that you think could attract a lot of people and then later sell it to make a return on that investment. Creating NFTs. You can make an NFT out of any kind of digital creation. It might be an illustration, it might be a song, and then sell that in the metaverse. Artists can also mint their work, which lets others reproduce it and then a portion of all future sales is then returned to the original artist. Teaching and education. Like with a lot of things during the lockdown, we saw digital education become more common. But even before then, in my work at Immersive Interactive, we have been creating virtual worlds to immerse students in the topics they're learning about, whether that's ancient Rome or the moon. And what better way to learn about places than to visit them. And there are many more opportunities presented by the Metaverse, which I'll probably expand on in a future video. But at the moment, the Metaverse does already exist, but it's in very small and very separate parts. But more than that, it is a vision for the not too distant future and the huge potential that it has for socializing, having fun and creating jobs. But it's not all just hot air. There is billions being invested into the Metaverse and already we've seen digital land and NFTs sell for millions. So if all of this has you interested in the future of virtual worlds, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. And if you like this video, you might also want to check out my most recent video over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.